islands of Dutch New Guinea beneath these clouds. An American army plane crashed some time ago. There are three survivors from the 24 passengers and crew. These three and the rescuing paratroopers are now walking over those razorbacks towards the mystical valley we call Shangri-La. We're flying over the route of their march. And when we get to the valley, I'm going to parachute in to photograph this rescue. Now we're coming in over Shangri-La. In this valley, the American Air Force is going to attempt the rescue of these people by pickup glider. There's one of the villages. There are dozens of them scattered over the length of this beautiful valley, never before seen by white men. There's another village. The pilot's going to buzz the base camp before I jump. Here we go. Now we're down in the mountains with them. This is the country they climbed up and down for 40 tough miles. In three and a half days, they walked down from the crash at 11,000 feet out of these never, never mountains. Corporal Margaret Hastings, Lieutenant McCollum, and Sergeant Decker, and the paratroopers led by Captain Walters. There's Maggie. She looks a little tired, but she's still walking in spite of the leg burns. And McCollum and Johnny come lately. One last razorback before the base count. And these are the Stone Age men we found in this valley. Troopers who set up the camp are running out to greet them. How good it feels to get back from a tough, well done job. To get rid of those heavy packs for the last time. To get ready for the first wash in days. And for Maggie to have a mirror survey Mac's handiwork. In the mountains, Mac had to cut her hair with a pocket knife. Don't worry, Maggie, it'll grow back. Now Walt talks to the plane overhead. To those chaps of the U.S. Air Force who did such a great job in finding and supplying the survivors, Walt tells them everyone is well and happy and bring on your gliders. And was that first meal good? Mmm, yummy job isn't finished. More medicine, clothes, and food float in. And every day, the burns on Maggie's legs had to be dressed. And they were still pretty painful. The paratrooper medics did a great job. And in the background, the people of this lovely valley sit quietly and wonder about the strange creatures from another world. The anxious days of waiting for the glider were filled with the excitement of discovering the valley of Shangri-La, the people never before seen by the outside world, gaining their confidence, trading with them. We saw the strange and varied types of these primitive people. We liked them. And they liked us. The queen came, shyly but with a welcome smile from Maggie. She wants Maggie to come to her village. So off we go to the home of this Stone Age queen. Here you see the acres of carefully irrigated land surrounding the villages. The women do all the work in Shangri-La. There's one of the watchtowers. Here's the Queen's home. A charming little group of clean, well-made huts. All over this valley you find these villages. 
The people were so shyly friendly. The children with their grass skirts at the center. Happily, the queen smoked and chats with Maggie. To her, Maggie was our queen. This warrior thinks Maggie's hairdo doesn't do anything for her. We asked Maggie to adopt this one as the Shangri-La. The village women wondered. The visit was most fascinating, and the queen asked us to come again. The days pass. More and more supplies are dropped. And over the walkie-talkie, Walt hears news from the outside world. And Maggie becomes adept with the local Tommy guns. There were days of waiting and worrying. There is still the glider. The discovery of Shangri-La went on. We explored the valley. The natives brought some of their semi-wild pigs. And our Filipino paratroopers prepared the traditional Philippine pig roast, the Feast of Lechon. Even Maggie took a hand at the basting. But the fun was eating roast pig stuffed with sweet potatoes and onions. Maggie gives us a little Henry VIII touch. And each day we learn more and more about these Stone Age people. We learn some of their strange language and some of their customs. They like to show us their strong physiques. We trade with them. We barter with shells. One gets a facial of mosquito repellent. He seems to like it. And then came that happy morning when the first plane over told Walt the glider was leaving Hollandia, all hands pitched in. The white and colored chutes were spread out to outline our little strip. Walt says, okay, bring her in. And here comes the long-awaited glider. How good she looks. Excited. The tow plane is making an upwind run. The glider is released. He's banking now. There's not much wind and he's coming in too fast. No, no, he's starting to fishtail to lose speed. Yes, he's making it nicely. Oh, he's good, this boy. Yes, here we are. Gently does it. Gently. Gently. Oh, beautiful landing. We all rush out to shake hands with the pilot. Now for the tough part. The pilot doesn't want to waste any time. The glider's pushed around. Even the natives help. Then the 300-foot nylon rope is stretched out. That's where your silk stockings went, ladies. There's enough there for a dozen, fifty dozen pairs. And the poles for the all-important loop. This is where the hook for the pickup plane takes hold. Pickup plane does a test run. Maggie arrives with her Shangri-La wardrobe and her souvenirs. Tow rope is coupled on, and they're ready. Everyone is strapped in, they take a deep breath and hang on. And here comes the tow plane, low and fast, lower and lower. Now, full power, bang. They're on, they're hooked, there they go. 